So when is an ad hominem not an ad hominem? Well, obviously uh, such a postulate violates the A cannot be equal to not A. Um, but there's a little bit more to the claim uh, that something's an ad hominem. As you can see here, uh, an ad hominem is an attack against a person rather than an attack against their claim. And you might think, well, that's always going to be a, a bad uh, thing, an irrelevant, an irrelevant observation. Uh, but it's not quite true. Sometimes an attack against the person can be relevant. Now, if we divide a kinds of theories in two, and on the left we'll consider theories that pertain to phenomena in the natural world, in order for those theories to be sound, we'd like them to possess certain qualities uh, such as having a cogent sort of verbiage to them, so they need to be well thought out and explained. They need to have uh, definitions that are, are, are clear and uh, not equivocal. And they also need to be really universalized or, or universal. Um, now this is quite an interesting one. A theory isn't necessarily wrong or utterly wrong because it isn't it isn't universal. Uh, it could be like a partial theory or a theory that just needs refining, um, but that could actually correctly, um, but only approximately explain what's going on. Uh, but that would still be a weak theory uh, and one that we need to um, one we need to reject and say, hey, you know, you need to make that better because it's not quite right. And finally, uh, theories that pertain to things in the natural world have to be verifiable. We, we, have, we have a natural world that we can turn to and examine to see if the theory actually works, um, which is a great thing in science. Um, you know, the, the claims of scientists are ob objectively, they're objectively verifiable. They can make objective claims. Um, so, what about this ad hominem thing? Well, the reason why I'm talking about this is because uh, of a discussion recently on, on some commentary on one of my programs talking about Stefan Molyneux, who made a program about uh, Karl Marx. I think it's called The Truth About Karl Marx. And in it... Uh, Stefan didn't really directly criticise the theories uh, present in Marxism. What he actually did was point out that uh, Marx was um, a hypocrite. Um, and people are saying, well, hey, look, that's just an ad hominem. Uh, and I'll come around to explaining why um, that's not quite the case in a moment. So, first, let's get back to our, our scientific theories um, and think about it for a minute. So, if we have, say, somebody who made a claim about rocket science, i.e. A, a physical science where you can verif verify things in nature, um, or, or perhaps it's some kind of, uh, effectively, some kind of astrological theory or something like that, say it's something about um, they want to land a rocket on the moon, uh, but their theory about um, the orbit of the moon is is uh, suspect. Now, if I said um, your theory about the orbit of the moon is suspect uh, because you're a child molester, clearly that's a completely irrelevant um, claim in, with respect to the theory. Um, it, it, it's, it just has nothing to do with it. However, if I said your theory or idea about uh, the orbits of the moon is wrong um, because you're rubbish with a telescope uh, because you've got cataracts, that's actually a completely different um, claim to an ad hominem. It's, it's a different kind of claim. It's claiming that you're incompetent 
to uh, perform the empirical uh, experiment that's the, the, the basis of your claim. Now, um, so that, that it's, it looks like an ad hominem, but it isn't an ad hominem because it, it's relevant. Uh, so there's this, this, actually these two different kinds of attacks against the person, some that are relevant and some not. And the ones that are relevant are what we call ad hominems or ad homs for short. Now, of course, if I say your your theory about um, orbiting of the moon is wrong uh, because you're you're empirically a bad scientist, uh, that's a different kind of claim to an ad hom. Um, but that doesn't mean that my claim is right or, or wrong. Uh, it just means you know, obviously, I need to 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 verify that claim. I need to to, to provide some evidence that that's actually affected your measurements and um you know i, I need to, to to provide some more proof but anyway i'm just making the point that attacks against the person can either be relevant or irre- irrelevant and um, we we shouldn't confuse these two uh, kinds of of attacks against a person uh, they belong to to different classes and and are different kinds of claims or counterclaims and should be treated differently so hopefully you've got that and it's all clear. Um, so let's come on and deal with, with, with Karl Marx. Uh, now, Marx uh, really... Marxism is, is a mishmash of different ideas. Uh, Marx, uh, Marx's, uh, Marxism is, is heavily borrowed from uh, Adam Smith's uh, theories, uh, particularly the the labour theory of value, which isn't Smith's theory. He he also borrowed it from somebody else, and the labour theory of value was widely believed to be true by economists at the time. Um, but there's many reasons to believe that it isn't actually correct, um, and and that it's a wrong theory economically, uh, which I won't deal with in this program. It's a, it's another topic. Uh, it says something I brushed on in a previous program. Um, perhaps not particularly convincingly, but in any case, I've said that there's doubts about his uh, about this labour theory of value that that Marx uses in his in his theories. Now, Marx's claim was basically that uh, the capitalist class exploit the the working class, the labourers, and that you know the labourers make everything, they they do all the work, but the capitalists just sit there. And rake in the profits, and and the theory is that basically um, the the workers are being shortchanged by the capitalists. They're they're not earning enough. That's that's the economic claim. Uh, but Marx also put this into an ethical framework. He he thought um, it went, I mean it went further than just uh, you're, you're not paying them enough. It was you are exploiting and robbing the workers, you, you capitalists. You are you are thieving uh, scoundrels, basically. I mean, this is the argument. So this is an ethical argument, and ethical arguments are a different class of arguments to arguments that pertain to something in 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 nature or in reality. Uh, they, they can't be verified against anything in nature or reality um so yeah they have a different there's a different set of qualities that apply to ethical theories um but we'd still like them to be to be cogent theories they need to be well defined they need to be free from from logical inconsistencies and and problems with categorization and they also need to be universal this this is probably one of the most important qualities of of an ethical theory um, if 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 your ethical theory contains qualifiers, uh, it's going to be weak. Just just like the scientific theory, if a scientific theory contains the sort of qualifiers, you know, this this theory only works over here, or this theory only works at this particular time, uh, then it's not a correct theory. I mean, it may be a partial explanation, uh, but it's not it's not a complete explanation. Uh, so it's it's essentially an, an inaccurate uh, form of explanation. Um, and this is the problem, I think, with, with Marxism um, from the ethical dimension. Uh, there's crit- if you never want to read some critics of, of Marxist uh, economics, um, I think I think Mises provides uh, some good 
some good counter arguments and i think uh, i think it's george reisman uh, also in his uh, capitalism book provides some pretty detailed and blow by blow uh, economic uh, counterclaims that uh, discredit marxism so anyway on with the ethical point of it uh, what Stefan pointed out was that Marx uh, was was a hypocrite. Um, he he rubbished and and criticised capitalists for exploiting the workers, but Marx himself uh, lived um, off the proceeds of a factory owner, uh, the the profits of a factory owner. So he was a an indirect beneficiary of the supposed exploitation of the working classes himself. And also another claim that Stefan made was that uh, Marx um, got his maid pregnant and and kicked her out in the street, basically, rather than uh, face the shame of being blamed for for being part of that um, unwanted pregnancy. Uh, So he was, you know, he's a complete hypocrite, um, uh, Marx, around uh, claims around exploiting the workers. Now, this is this is like um, my claims um, earlier that you know if if a rocket scientist had bad eyes and and didn't look at uh, his uh, orbits of the moon properly with the telescope or whatever, um, this is actually a, a relevant uh, attack against the person uh, like that uh, when we refer to Karl Karl Marx being a hypocrite around exploiting the workers. And the reason for this is uh, the universality of ethical claims. Um, moral moral arguments uh, need to be universal arguments. Uh, for example, um, and I've made this case before in another program about laws, uh, if I claim um, that it's unlawful to uh, uh, to rob people, and yet I'm I'm insisting on doing some taxation. Uh, it, it's not fair to say that there's a law against robbery because clearly my uh, predilection for taxation is an exception, and therefore uh, the claim isn't universal. It's 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 in, incomplete. We need we need further explanation and justification for the qualifiers that we've we've placed on these behaviours. Uh, why why is uh, taxation to be exempt uh, from belonging to the realm of theft or thefty actions um, so we need we need evidence to prove that it 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 doesn't fit in uh, with with those kinds of behaviors and is therefore immoral um, and so what we can do when people make ethical claims or, or, or moral claims is we can say, uh, does it apply at all times? And a, a subset of, of that um, sort of uh, qualification for, for the idea is, well, do, does the idea apply to you? And clearly, clearly, Karl Marx was, was quite happy to exploit the workers. Um, it, didn't, it wasn't morally objectionable. He didn't have a problem with it because he was doing it. Now, of course, that could just be because of, of, of cognitive dissonance and uh, ignorance. He really didn't realise that, that um, he was an example of what he criticised or claimed was wrong. I mean, you, you could make that argument. Uh, and that's, that's fair enough. But all I'm wishing to point out is that fundamentally, um, as we've seen with the rocket science thing, uh, pointing out that Karl Marx exploited the workers is not, for example, the same as as saying that um, he had uh, boils and things. Um, you know that the fact that he had boils doesn't uh, challenge his um, theories of of his economic theories or his his uh, moral claims at all. Uh, but the fact that he was a a, a sort of rapey uh, creep uh, definitely does undermine his ethical and um, moral claims about exploitation. Um, and if you don't find this convincing, uh, I think you need to look at my program about the law, or about law, and there's quite a few of them. And it, it, the test is, goes something like this. Uh, imagine... Uh, that somebody's up in court and they stand accused of murdering somebody and you say to them, uh, well, 
do you think murder's acceptable? And they, they're kind of on the spot then, because as a murderer, if they, if they say murder's not acceptable, then they need to explain why they did it. Uh, and if they say murder is acceptable, then they can't really object if you sort of jump up and plunge a knife into their chest or, or slash their throat or whatever. Um, so that's that's this universality uh, qu- uh, um, requirement for ethical and moral claims. Uh, everybody kind of has to 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 be an example that uh, goes along with the case. Uh, if you can show that there's people that aren't prepared or are unwilling um to comply um with a particular claim for example you know the idea that it's it's unlawful uh for people to smoke marijuana um but clearly that's not the case because quite you know quite rational actors are prepared to smoke marijuana um and also you know, it might be useful in medicine or something like this. There's all, there's all these things which you can put up, which which really say, look, this isn't a matter. There's a moral matter. It's it's just a preference. Um, so yeah, I hope that's kind of clear. Uh, it's a bit uh, a bit detailed, and and um, perhaps I haven't expressed it in the best possible way. Um, but yeah, hopefully you get it. There are there are different types of attacks against the person. And some of them are completely irrelevant and therefore ad hominems, and actually some of them are relevant, in in which case uh, they're not ad hominems. So uh, bye for now, thanks for listening, and you know, post some uh, uh, comments and responses underneath, I'd be very interested to hear what you think about this issue. Bye for now.